Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of three corded wear culture individuals from Estonia from the Bronze Age. Uh, I gave them names Walter, Freddy and Steven and these are the names I'll be using in this video to refer to these three corded wear individuals from Estonia. Talking about appearance, let's begin with Walter, who has the lowest coverage uh, file out of these three individuals. He's predicted to have hazel color eyes, snub-shaped nose, and any kind of hair color besides black. For hair shape prediction, he's predicted to have curly hair, and for eye shape predictor, uh, he's predicted to have South Asian eye shape. Uh, YSEC is giving him a very light skin color together with brown hair and sunglasses because YSEC is not able to give him an eye color prediction. And he probably did have very light skin. And uh, the, the reason I can say that is because he had some light color variants, a lot of light color variants in SLC 45A2 and even IRF 4 and TIR. So he definitely had light, light skin, light features. But we can't really say for sure because... His genotype for BH1, 2, 3, and 4 couldn't be determined. That's simply not in his file. So he could be anything from olive-skinned and uh, brown-eyed to very pale and blue-eyed. Um, the prediction as it is is hazel eyes, snub-shaped nose, and not black hair. Now we're moving on to Freddy. Unlike Walter, his file is actually pretty high quality. And we know for certain that he has brown eyes, Greek-shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, my eye shape predictor tool is giving him an Estonian, so kind of a Northern European eye shape, Northern European facial morphology. And for um, the hair shape predictor, my hair shape predictor tool is giving him a prediction for straight hair. He has blue eye haplotype 1, and he's heterozygous for BUH2, and he does not have blue eye haplotype 3 or 4, so definitely quite dark in terms of eye color and hair color. Uh, but he does have some genotypes. If you look at his genotypes for SLC 45A2 and um, Kittle G and, and ASIP and SLC 24A5, you get, the, you get the sense that this individual probably has a uh, olive skin tone. He has, his genotype is typical for somebody from, not from Europe, but lay, let's say from the Middle East. And he probably looked quite Middle Eastern in terms of his skin tone and coloring in general. Now we're moving on to the phenotype of the final individual with the largest coverage file, which is Steven. Steven is predicted to have brown color eyes, snub shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, for my eye shape predictor tool, he's predicted to have Estonian eye shape, once again, Northern European facial morphology. And my hair shape predictor tool is actually predict predicting him to have curly hair. Uh, I say that this individual likely looked uh, quite Middle Eastern as well, because he had ancestral genotypes in SLC 45A2, which is very atypical for modern Europeans, but pretty common for the Middle East. And um, maybe he looked a little bit lighter than what's typical for Middle Easterners because of his genotype in ASIP, SLC 2045, TIRP1, IRF4, Keto G, the, the list goes on. So he probably looked, in terms of uh, skin color, probably somewhere intermediate between Southern Europe and Arabia. Uh, he has BH1, blue eye haplotype 1, he is heterozygous for BH2 and BH3, and he does not have BH4. Now we're moving on to Steven's GD match results. I selected him for the GD match results because his file is the highest coverage, and they are all pretty much very similar to one another. So Steven has a lot of Caucasus admixtures. You can see 29% Caucasus related admixture, 37% uh, European hunter gatherer, which here is labeled as VHG, but it's really VHG and Eastern hunter gatherer together, and around 20 or 19.5% of Neolithic farmer admixture. Very typical result for somebody who's a corded wear individual uh, with the Oracle actually he is closest to the battle axe culture and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, are these people the battle axe culture or something that preceded it uh, and are they battle axe or are they some other kind of corded wear I don't really know uh, there wasn't much information online to find about these samples he is getting one of those mixture of corded wear from Poland plus Satsurblia hunter gatherer Kokosus hunter gatherer uh, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13 pretty high uh, what should I say? Pretty high West Mediterranean. You don't really expect to see West Mediterranean in a corded wear result. Um, typically, what you would see is Baltic, a little bit of North Atlantic, and a lot of West Asian, like 18 or 19% West Asian, which I guess does fall in line. Uh, with the Oracle, because of the West Mediterranean, he's getting more of this mixture. Of, well, it's not only that. It's also that plus uh, the North Atlantic. So I guess he's scoring a lot of Western components in general. He's getting more of this mixture of Swedish plus Caucasus groups. And this is what he's scoring with Harappa World. What's interesting is he is scoring 16.7% Baloch, which is a component that peaks in, you know, uh, what it's named after. It peaks in Baloch people in Pakistan. Uh, but Indo-Europeans from Europe tend to score quite a lot of this Baloch component. 
uh, because it does quite um, it does represent the southern admixture that was present in Yamna. The southern or Caucasus-like admixture that was present in Yamna uh, does tend to um, be modeled as Baloch with this Harappa world com calculator. And also with Gidrosia too, which is kind of an interesting dynamic with Gidrosia. It is also uh, getting modeled as, as Gidrosian, which is peaking in Pakistani groups. And this is what Steven is scoring upon DNA LK10. Uh, you can see 26.5% Caucasus HG, quite a lot of Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture, more than what's typical for even modern Eastern Europeans who have the most Caucasus HG with this calculator. Uh, and with the Oracle, he's actually getting more as a mixture of corded ware, plus some kind of Armenian or Kotiaskide, which is a Caucasus hunter-gatherer, so a mixture of corded ware from Estonia, plus some kind of West Asian group. And for the modern populations, he is closest to Mardvins, who are finno ugric people in Central Russia. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of 70% Belarusian plus 31% Chechen or Swedish. I, it, uh, the slide went by too fast. I couldn't talk about it. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, pretty typical result for a corded wear individual. 1.3% uh, East Asian is kind of atypical. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. 89% West Eurasian. Uh, there is some Sub-Saharan African and East Eurasian affinities, which um, pretty typical for corded wear once again. And finally, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. I'm not going to really discuss this because it's kind of hard to read, but you can uh, pause and you can follow through with it. Uh, and at the bottom, I'm showing you his, gen his genome compared to some of the to the other two guys, right? You can see they're pretty similar. Uh, what may be the difference? The difference maybe is that Steven is a little bit less European hunter-gatherer than the other two. So maybe he's a little bit more southern than the other two individuals. But really, if you if you are curious and you want to find out what the other two guys score, you can download their genomes from the link which is in the in the description of this video, and you can upload them to GED Match, and you can see for yourself. That's all I'm gonna say here. Now we move on to the fascinating section where we uh, discover and discuss their traits. Let's start with um, Walter. Click Analyze Genome. It's gonna, we're going to enter a name. Yeah, that's the name we're going to enter. So, what about Walter? Walter does not have any no goal learning variants in DRD2 Pro Financing Pro variation. Um, oh, he's actually got GG here, which means less dopamine to receptors and decreased risk of schizophrenia. So, these two, these two go uh, against each other. Typically, you would see G here inherited together with the A allele here. But in his case, some kind of, I don't know, some kind of funky, maybe dislinkage event or something happened where he inherited the G here together with the G here. Interesting. Uh, he's got GG in this variation of DRD2, which is typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia, uh, less dopamine to receptors. What about lactose persistence? Not a carrier, does not have European lactose persistence mutation. For the empathy gene, he's got TT here, which is associated with decreased OXTR expression, but most people have TT here. Most people, I feel like most people have been analyzing on my channel have TT or one T allele in this variation. So it's kind of, you know, doesn't say much. And he's got AA in this variation, which means two high two variants for higher OXTR exp expression and more empathy. For diabetes, he's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type one diabetes. Definitely does not have type one diabetes. For hemochromatosis, does not carry any risk variants. For Alzheimer's, no. APOE2 allele, so does not carry any Alzheimer's risk variants. For oh, micro P, you know what that is? It's a code word that I've uh, made up on my channel to refer to this trait, but I can't really say it because monetization, he does not have this. And what about um, what about his polygenic risk scores? Let's look at that. So we open this, and for polygenic risk scores, he's got a slightly above average risk score for schizophrenia and he's got a below average risk score for type 2 diabetes and he's got a pretty high risk score for Alzheimer's which is interesting where is he getting that from? oh I think I know where that's from I think that's from this variation here okay so he's got a slightly high and, and then there's some other ones that are used in the calculation that aren't shown on the screen uh, but he's got a slightly higher risk score of Alzheimer's than what's typical for most people. All right, now we're going to reset the scores. And now we're going to move on to Freddy. Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I used to play that game when I was like a kid. I was in school. 
Freddy, okay. Alright. Um, Freddy got TT in this variation of MAOA, which means lower MAOA activity, which means warrior genotype, more dopamine. Uh, he's got AA in this variation, which means increased number of dopamine D2 receptors and higher risk of schizophrenia. So we, from this we can kind of assume that he's got GG here. Uh, more dopamine D2 receptors, higher odds of schizophrenia. What about lactose persistence? Does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation for empathy gene. Two variants for higher levels of empathy here, empathy here. And this is the only variation we're really going to care about. Uh, because this one is kind of, everybody's scoring TT. You're going to see this if, you're, if you've been watching my videos. Mostly everybody's scoring TT here. So it's like everybody's a sociopath, basically. For diabetes, it's got CC genotype here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. And no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation. And AA here, which leads to a decrease in the risk of myopia. No micro P, you know what that is. Not going to... Um, spell that out for you. Now let's uh, explore his polygenic risk scores. Let's look at that. For polygenic risk scores he's got a below average risk score for schizophrenia. Um, he's got a above average risk score for diabetes and he's got a below average risk score for Alzheimer's. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna reset that. I'm going to reset that, and now we're going to move on to Steven, which is our highest quality, highest quality file. All right, I'm going to enter the name when it comes up on the screen. It's just going to put Steph. What? It's not even... I'm used to typing with two hands. Okay, so Steph got AA in Komotsval met variation, which means warrior genotype, meaning more dopamine. He's got MAO, MAOA is not genotype. So Komt, um, met met genotype. For Komt, he's a warrior. For DRD2, he's got AA here, or two derived non go learner variants, which means less dopamine D2 receptor sites. And GG here, which means once again less dopamine D2 receptor sites. But he does have AA in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated in an increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and an increased likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, he's got GG in TAC1, so he does not have the monkey A1A1, uh, monkey A1 allele, which leads to like like crazy decrease, like 40% decrease in the av availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites, uh, which he does not have. And for 5 HTTLPR, does not have long form 5 HTLPR. He's got short form 5 HTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression. For lactose persistence, does not carry European lactose persistence alleles. For the empathy gene, AG here, heterozygous genotype, which means one variant for higher levels of empathy, one variant for lower uh, levels of empathy. That's kind of the same genotype as me. And for hemochromatosis, he's got one copy of the H64, um, 63D variant. Interesting. So he has one copy of the H64, 3D variant in hemochromatosis, kind of interesting stuff. It's possible he might have had hemochromatosis. For Alzheimer's, no risk alleles here, no risk alleles here, but he's got CC in this variation, which leads to increased risk of Alzheimer's. Let's see what it's going to say for the polygenic risk scores for that. For miscellaneous section, no micro P. Once again, no micro P. You know what that is. I'm not going to spell it out for you. Um, for IQ, higher IQ, 8 points higher IQ than individuals with AA genotype, and this genotype for smaller cranium and lower IQ. And now, well, now, oh, it actually got CC in this variation. I think I consider this to be an important enough variation to mention, uh, which leads to greater odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Now let's see for his polygenic risk scores. Let's click on them. All right, so for polygenic risk scores, he's got a basically half the average risk score for schizophrenia, so much lower risk score for schizophrenia, and lower risk score for diabetes, but however, two times higher than the average risk score for Alzheimer's. Um, that's pretty much all there is to these genomes. Thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download both of, all three of them from a uh, link which is in the description of the video, and leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye. Peace out.